Richard Byworth, uh, welcome to Bitcoin for Millennials uh, on the on the road. We are right. Lovely to be here, mate. Great yeah. to meet you in person. Finally, yeah, definitely. I think uh, we had a um, a great start with our first uh, episode. Uh, did really well. Mm -hmm. It's funny that, uh, of course. Back then I prepped a bit, but we just uh, uh, sh uh, <laughs> shot our shit, basically. <laughs> and now uh, totally zero prep, but I think um, maybe a fun way to start is, uh, yeah, you just had a panel, you're walking around here in this uh, conference. Uh, l last year when I was here, I think it was half the people. Uh, of course, we were in a down market. Now it's uh, we, we are moving up a little bit. Uh, yeah, wh what is your thought on this conference or just feeling this energy, people paying attention? How does that uh, make you feel? Yeah, look, it's always nice to get in a room with a bunch of, of Bitcoiners. You, you you often feel very lonely in your real life yeah. being a Bitcoiner, right? You know, you you talk to people, you can see their eyes slightly glaze over. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we just had a great chat. Uh, and I think one of, one of the really interesting things that just came up was how do you invest? Now, we, we, we invest in hedge funds, but the, uh, everyone else on the panel was in venture. And so... You know, we talked about the, my experience of, with Relay and we're talking about why would you ever essentially give up your Bitcoin for a dollar investment? Yeah. And I think this is always a really interesting debate and it obviously leads to questions about denominating funds or investments in Bitcoin themselves. But, you know, that's often not possible. And I think, you know, when you, you, you think about investing in in venture you're thinking about investing in a startup and when you invest in a startup you're investing in the person right you're investing in the founder no matter what you yeah. think about the idea or anything you're investing in that person and their values and how they're going to fight under pressure right and i think you know bitcoin is generally you know the the mindset is you know that you, you're a fighter generally you know i think this is something you're going against the grain you're willing to be wrong uh, in in the eyes of everybody else for a long time because you have this gut feeling that you know you're right and I think you know we we always talk about this we talk both online and offline is that Bitcoin creates a value a value structure within you as an individual and I think you know we talked about consciousness and and how Bitcoin's related to a, a elevated level of consciousness perhaps and leading humanity in that direction and I think when you invest in a founder that is a Bitcoin only founder, then yeah. they're running a business that is Bitcoin only and they're focused on just that asset class, then you know that you're investing in a founder that even if he doesn't have your values today, that he is moving in that direction or she moving in that direction. And I think this is a really important point because, you know, I was discussing it with some ego death investors yesterday um, from Costa Rica who you know, they, they, they made the point, I think it's valid. Like, this is not necessarily a, an investment where I think I'm gonna massively outperform Bitcoin, but I am giving something back to the community. And if you're also investing in founders that are all really aligning around that value system that is Bitcoin, then you're much more likely that those companies are gonna be successful anyway. So that was a massive brain fart. Yeah, uh, oh, I love that. Yeah, I, I think uh, yeah, we just mentioned a few things before we started recording, right? Like hurdle rate, and uh, for the for the people who've watched uh, our our first video together, um, I think I made the title something like uh, uh, "Bitcoin is the is the lowest risk uh, asset that you can own," right? Once you understand that your hurdle rate, right, like uh, what you would sell it for shoots up obviously and if you talk about venture investing that's obviously very uh risky i've, I've seen a fair share of uh, pitch decks in my life you know all the graphs go to the right and up and it's all a, a pretty picture and I, I like what you said when you know the the investing in bitcoin companies companies is necessary but yeah the because your hurdle rate is so high like how are you going to compare holding bitcoin versus investing in it um yeah and i, I, I love that that it is more about values. Of course, it's about, you know, what does this company do? Where is it going, etc. cetera. But um, yeah, if you have to take a risk on and the company and the founder, uh, taking a risk on the founder is obviously, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's better if you can mitigate that in some way. And I think the aligning the values is a, is a good angle there. Yeah. Yeah, and if you think about it, right? I mean, Seda obviously has his playbook where he's just accumulating as much Bitcoin as possible. And again, this was something that came up on the panel is like, 
you don't want an early stage company putting Bitcoin on its balance sheet because they're probably going to need to come for that yeah. that money at yeah. some point. And it will always be the worst time to sell the Bitcoin for dollars where your costs are. But I think, you know, when you when you think about the stage that you're investing in, if you if you can start investing in companies that are getting to profitability and obviously have that exponential growth hockey stick that, that you're talking about in those pitch books, um, then, you know, those are the sort of companies you want to be stacking Bitcoin yeah, with their exactly. cash flow. Yes. Right? Because then you are actually running an even more aggressive accumulation strategy than Sailor would. But that's what Relay is doing, right? Like they're DCAing into into Yeah, Bitcoin. very pleased to share that Relay turned profitable at the beginning of this year. Yeah, so awesome. Slowly have been DCAing into Bitcoin and, you know, that's... That's the strategy that I think everyone at Ego Death wants to see in all their portfolio companies. Yeah, really, obviously being one. Well, it's still also so early, right? So I think I think it's a great achievement that they also turned uh, uh, profitable. I mean, uh, well, on our last conversation, we talked about you know how many people understand Bitcoin. The the market is not that huge yet, right? We are still extremely early, and so uh, I I think that's really nice to know that it is possible, right? Yeah, and. Look, I mean, th this is a company that is pretty much only focused on Switzerland. They're just about to get their MICA license, yeah. expand broadly into Europe. So, you know, the potential for growth is fairly exponential. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so it's an exciting company to be involved with. I was thinking uh, we could flip the entire script of this conversation because you talked with these uh, founders, you said, from Costa Rica. I don't know if you. No, no, they were, they were investors. Oh, they were investors. Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. investors. Uh, so I don't know if you want to share, but but uh, you you eventually also talk more about this consciousness, spirituality stuff. I think that's where the value uh, idea uh, came from. How does it? Is it something that you see in a lot of people that are into Bitcoin? This this kind of like becoming more aware, getting into this consciousness, spiritual stuff. I, I got to say, I got connected uh, through um, a friend of mine that runs a, 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 a center for personal growth, let's okay. say, <laughs> in Costa Rica, yeah. um, where they use some plant medicine. And uh, I got to say that, you know, when we talk about our conversations and how, you know, often go fairly extreme fairly quickly is because you said something really quite impressive earlier. You said it's almost like you're kind of with the conversation giving each other indications of permission to take it to yeah. a level higher and higher yeah and that was exactly what happened with this conversation and these two guys like you know they're investors it turned out they're investors in ego death as well coincidentally um and they um they had been uh you know just gradually getting more and more focused on the consciousness element and uh yeah i mean it, it was a really amazing conversation after just 20 minutes like a huge connection but you know the base of it being bitcoin and what it's doing for humanity what it could well sorry what it can potentially do for humanity because i don't think we're there yet but also what it does and we talked about it just now with the founders like you know when you, when you get someone who just becomes immersed in it understands what it means it changes all your values about like yeah you know safety and talks about low and high type time preference and obviously the difference between fiat and 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 a hard money and and the, where that leads you and i think these are these are intrinsically linked when we're talking about consciousness it's that value system of the lower time preference versus the higher time preference that's leading you in that direction and uh, yeah and uh, just to round off on the topic that you're kind of touchy on i saw a tweet uh, about three years ago which i i, I always remember I, I think it was brandon quisson yeah and he said i i can only respect people that understood bitcoin without doing psychedelics <laughs> does your bitcoin custody setup keep you up at night gain peace of mind with onramp and their multi-institution custody solution onramp creates a dedicated multi-signature vault for you and three separate institutions each hold a key, which are OnRamp, Bitco, and CoinCover. But none of them can move funds unilaterally, only you have control. These institutions can only sign with your instruction. OnRamp's multi-institution custody eliminates single points of failure, reduces your personal attack service and technical burden, and provides access to financial services that allow you to secure your Bitcoin, including inheritance planning, 
insurance-backed warranties for all balances and transactions, low-cost trading, and more. Check out onrampbitcoin.com through my link in the description below and receive $250 in Bitcoin when you join. Yeah, I, uh, I have to say that uh, the psychedelics uh, definitely helped me to zoom out more and uh, see Bitcoin also more. And in general, well, well Brit uh, Brandon has written a really great article uh, that's mm -hmm. called uh, Bit Bitcoin is Mycelium. Yeah, um, yeah it, I, I think it's just really interesting that a lot of people also gravitate towards this. And like the last two weeks I've been thinking about, so what is this, right? I think, as you said, it's this lower time preference, which changes your values because you are valuing the future more than you would have done before, or in general, maybe how other people do. You know, that's how Save Dino Moose talks about it, right? Everyone discounts the future because the future is uncertain for everyone. You don't know how much time you have. Mm -hmm. And that combined with something that uh, Seb Bunny told me in a, a few episodes back, he said something that really struck me is like, all the money that you have right now or all the economic value or energy that you gathered is worth the most right now. So you are already incentivized to spend it now, right? And it feels like that kind of, I don't know, doubles, but it increases the, your you discounting the future even more. Like you're also not preparing for the future, you're not building for the future, right? So it becomes very focused on the now, very um, yeah nihilistic. People just look at, at at what is going on right now, and obviously, you know, if you if you look at the news, <laughs> it's not uh, it, 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 it's not great. But where I think we can get, if we eventually get to a harder money where people can create time and space to figure out, you know, what am I here to do um, to add value to the world, you know, in, in whatever way, then we will get to a more, I don't know if it's peaceful because there will always be like power projection and stuff like that. But I think people will be more happy also because if you try something out right now and you fail at it, maybe because you suck or the idea is bad or whatever, which is probably the case because most ideas suck, right? So you want to figure out in your life, what am I good at? Mm. And you want to try out stuff. But if you fail once or twice in the fiat money world, yeah, then you, you, you lost this time and space that you maybe saved up for to try this out. But on a Bitcoin standard, if the Bitcoin you have eventually buys you more over time, you give yourself time and space to try out something. And if you fail, it's actually a good thing because you know that you will have space and time to try out something new does, does that make sense i'm still uh, pondering on this but no, i was like i think it's a very it nips it a bit it's a very important point and in the, you know i i had a, a a startup that was problematic in my previous firm and um, it it really the fact that i didn't have a core of bitcoin it just did allow me to just be like okay i i can i can relax a bit i can give this i can give this the space yeah I can I can move forward again, you know, and I think uh, this is this is what you're saying is all about freedom, and how it carves it out for you. I think you know, I mean, yeah, but in a real way, right? Like, and uh, not in the way that people now think it is. So, if I save money now, mm -hmm. I buy some time towards the future to try uh, setting up a company, for example. But when you fail, and again, most ideas suck, so you will probably fail, which is all good. And, and the whole goal, I think, is to fail as fast as possible, you know, to figure out is this a good idea or not, should I pursue this or not. But, but then, yeah, if that time and space is literally gone, then the incentive to not try something new again is very low. And I think on a Bitcoin standard, it just remains the same. If you want to pursue something new, try something new, you actually keep continuing to have this time and space to try something new instead of maybe just conforming to some job that you know you don't you, you don't like and i think that is what a lot of people currently have is they are doing things that they don't like because they have to they're basically forced in some way they don't have the 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 authority over themselves to actually be like no i'm gonna i don't know do you know keep beings or whatever you want to do like it it's not about what you want to do but it's about what you are good at like discovering that and I think that makes people more happy than just conforming because well yeah. I think what you're getting at is that freedom angle and it's just a it's just a mindset freedom is a mindset right you can sit there and think oh no I've got to work I've got to make as much 
fiat as possible to make sure that, you know, because $25 million might not be a lot of money in the future. And so I've got to keep just going and going and going. Yeah. And, and the problem is if you don't have somewhere safe to store it, even if it's $25 million or $25, then you're not able to invest in your future. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I invited a friend of mine to come to this conference because we, we had some tickets we could give. And uh, she was like, oh, I can't, I, I've got to go to work. Um, really, really busy at work. And I'm like, you know, that's a shame. Yeah. Because she's like someone who has started to go on the Bitcoin journey, right? You've got the biggest Bitcoin conference in Europe happening on your doorstep. And, you know, you can't, you can't make it. Uh, because you're so like blinded by the fiat mechanism. I think it's all the same sort of thing, right? Yeah. So you need to be able to step back and say, what is important for me and my family and my future? And Bitcoin just always leads you in that direction. Well, I think that's the beautiful thing. I think that's a, both of our experiences, yeah. I, I was thinking, I don't know if I asked you last time, but um, I, I think you're a good person to ask. Like, I was, I was wondering how you see the like next 10 years of Bitcoin. So, uh, you know, in 2033, 99% of all Bitcoin will be mined. The last 1% will be mined in the 107 years after. So that's basically a rounding error. And you hear Michael Saylor talk about, you know, this is the Bitcoin gold, gold rush. This is where, you know, the, the stakes will be divided in, in some sense. Of course, I, I hope that, unfortunately, you know, the, well, the finance bros figured it out. <laughs> Not pointing at you, but, you know, the, the Wall Street finance bros figured it out. I, I just hope more general people will figure it out, right? That's also, uh, you know, why I'm doing the podcast. But how, how do you see this kind of like gold rush, as Michael Saylor calls it, like the next 10, 10 years? What's your outlook? It's inevitable. Mm. It's absolutely inevitable. And, you know, I mean... You don't want though. This is what Sailor says, and I agree with him a hundred percent. You don't want people to figure it out quickly. Yeah, they, they will lose it. The problem, the, yeah. no. The problem is that we'll be trading at ten million dollars of Bitcoin, and then how much oh, Bitcoin yeah. can you actually yeah. accumulate? Like mm -hmm. my friend here in Amsterdam, you know, I've been orange pilling her slowly, and she's getting there, and she's bought a bit of Bitcoin. But you know, to make sure that she has enough. You know, you don't want it at ten million dollars because then she's just gonna look at it again. Well, I don't want this anymore. I, yeah. I, well, I can't buy any more of it. Yeah, like it's this is crazy. So, you you don't want it to be crazy. Uh, crazy gold rush. Um, it's gonna happen inevitably because this is the hardest money that has ever been created, um, or invented, or or discovered. I think that that's a, an interesting. Also yesterday, uh, did you see my tweet? It was yesterday. I think Bitcoin is the invention. And absolute digital scarcity is the discovery. I did see it. Oh, I liked it. Yeah, that's a good one. It's absolutely. And I, I think it's a discovery. I do. Like the wheel was a discovery. It's not an invention. It's a, yeah. it's a discovery. Fire is a discovery. Right. So anyway, coming back to it, I think, you know, we're gonna, we've got to this point of inevitability. I asked you the question, I think, on the podcast, the way that I orange pilled a friend of mine recently was, look, he was a finance bro and like, he just couldn't understand Bitcoin. His ego was getting in the way a bit. And, uh, you know, it involves admitting that you're wrong. We talked about it yeah. <laughs> like for, for a long time. But I said to him, I said, listen, you have a, a vote. You can vote right now in how you want to store your money. You can store your money in uh, money that can be continuously debased by someone that you have no influence over. Yeah. Or you can have a money that is hard you always know the issue in the schedule like nothing no one on this planet can change it where do you want to store your savings a lot though you get to vote right yeah. now yeah like what are you gonna do because like, well obviously i'd choose the algorithm yeah like well it's not obvious because you haven't done it yet and 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 this is the thing i think you know that's what's going to happen slowly over the next 10 years and as it starts to go faster like when we go to 250k People are going to be like, oh my God, this is insane. Like, you know, they're going to start selling some of their Bitcoin, uh, you know, if, if they're not one of the 10,000, right? Yeah. And, and, and then, the, you know, you're going to have this moment of, of uh, you know, sort of disillusionment where we come crashing back down to as low as potentially 60,000. And then it just builds again. And the people that have just seen it go from 60,000 to 250K and paid attention to it for the first time, 
they're going to get on board. Yeah. And this is the way that it's going to happen. But I think what's going to be interesting next, and, um, you know, we talked about the fact that, that I'm, look, I've launched a podcast recently as well. One of the guests that I'm getting on to speak is Samson Mao, because yeah. I really, I think one of the key concerns for humanity is CBDCs and the way that nation states are thinking that this is some sort of a solution. And obviously his work is about getting nation state adoption of Bitcoin. But I think this is going to be the next phase of all of this. You are going to see nation state adoption. Obviously, we've seen uh, the kingdom of uh, Bhutan recently, yeah. as well as Bahrain. And so these, these countries are starting to pop up and realize what's going on. And once you have nation state adoption to a significant level, then it becomes a game theory, geopolitical like power play. Ultra entertaining, don't yes. you? <laughs> yeah. Um, I like how you propose, like, is, is, is you know, this choice or that choice, right? Like, it's it's fairly simple, and I've been thinking about this a lot as well. Like, it, in essence, Bitcoin is very simplistic, right? It's like this is a set of rules that gets checked every ten minutes. You know, the rules of a monetary policy of you know something that can act as a money every ten minutes enough a note say okay we're good let's uh, continue that's basically it right it produces a certainty like an economic uh, constant uh, you could call it and so that's very simplistic but in a world that's uh, overly like obfuscated abstracted you know made very complicated you know the, the current you know finance and, and economics world or how people talk about it it's just really hard to find that simplistic signal in 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 all of this um noise how do you deal with more like high level investors or or the people that you deal with 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 the hedge fund in in talking about this because they are obviously uh knee deep into um you know the complicated finance world yeah and i think that this is also a, a, where the element of ego comes in right they're looking at it going i don't understand this i don't want to admit that so i'm going to call it a fraud yeah right so that that's the thing and that's why i broke it down with this this guide to that vote element because you you have to simplify it in the eyes of everyone even these finance bros who as i said on the podcast a lot of finance bros don't understand the financial <laughs> finance right you know i remember walking across the floor talking to the cash sales guys about derivatives and they're like hey you know but they don't want to ask you a question because yeah. they don't want to look stupid yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't want to be the guy that's asking the question because it's all about ego and macho and blah so, yeah, I think a simplifying message is all, always super important for everybody. Like, you're not, you don't need to talk technical to, to a technical guy. Like, generally, I find that people that are more intelligent understand things in a much more simplified way and they can speak about something that is more technical in a very simplified way. And that's, that's generally when you know someone's really understood something. Yeah. I, uh, I think it's just an interesting journey in general. Like uh, we, we walk around here, all the people here are interested in this thing. Um, but yeah, as, as we talked about in the last episode, uh, you think 10,000 people understand what Bitcoin is when they hold it. I said 100K. So it's, it's, it's just so and so early. And I, I, I love that you shared, you know, these different approaches to, to talking to people because we should not stop. <laughs> because these CBDCs are coming in yeah. some, to some degree and these central banks think this is a good idea. And I think a lot of people will also be, you know, super uh, easily um, convinced that, you know, uh, you know, if you start your, your CBDC, download your CBDC wallet and you get 100 euros or 50 or maybe 10 even, you know, um, yeah, that's going to happen. And that's a lot of people are going to happen. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but how do you see maybe a, a, a fun last uh, last question? We are going to be agitators towards that. Obviously, uh, the, this message of Bitcoin is, is spreading and spreading. Do you think uh, we will get blamed, the Bitcoiners will be blamed for uh, losing trust uh, in the fiat money? I mean, I think you've seen how the mainstream media will attack anything that is opposing the mm. particular government uh, or state that is controlling it. Um, it is in opposition to that state. So anything that is in opposition to that state is attacked. State is attacked by that that media. So yes, I think there is absolutely no doubt that Bitcoiners will be 
selfish, horrible criminals <laughs> in the eyes of the media in five to 10 years time. Yeah. That's almost inevitable as well. How, how can we mitigate that, do you think? What, what, is, the, what is the best argument against uh, that? Could be ignoring it, but I don't know if that's possible. It's easy to get angry. Mm. And I think, you know, we kind of landed there at the end of the last chat we had. I think uh, when you approach something with, with love and good intention and you just see the person just dealing with their own shit in the belief system or, you know, life that they're living and you, are, you, you try to empathize with that person and, and just sort of think that you're projecting mm. love towards them. Now, I know that that's not going to probably necessarily wash with a lot of people and people can't do that, but I would say that getting angry against it all is definitely a negative. Yeah. Like, you've got to stay composed. We are going to get attacked and you've got to just stay level. It's like politics, right? You know, the longer that the the angry party shout at the party that are trying to do good things the more and more the the people will see yeah right? and i think we just can't get angry we can't get engaged in it we've got to defend and i think there is an element of bitcoin maximalism that can be angry toxic toxicity and i think you are someone that really presents that toxic <laughs> No, 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 I was going to say the opposite. <laughs> Sorry. The more peaceful approach. I, I, I think that you are definitely someone that approaches it in that way of just wanting to share, to give, to help people. And I think that's, that's how we win. Obviously, I, I really appreciate that. That is what I'm trying to do. I do think the, the toxic maximalism is also about just calling out those shit. You know, like, yeah, if, if, if you uh, use a, a dumb argument in a high level um a discussion yeah i i do think that should be <laughs> pointed out yeah. and and i do think that's what we see sometimes with all the gaslighting from the uh, you know i i hear uh the, the 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 funnest example that i use now is uh you know you hear christine lagarde say you know one euro is one euro and then i think like well one euro was one euro in 1999 but in 2024 you know it's 30 cents so yeah. you have to be honest to have a good substantial debate but the fact that most of them are not i think shows you uh, not only what we're up against, but also how flawed the system is that uh, we are hopefully uh, uh, replacing at some point uh, in, the, in the future. But uh, yeah, really appreciate those thoughts and uh, I want to thank you for your time here. So uh, great conversation. Always. Cheers. Thank you, man. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, also make sure to check out this video right here or go to my page and check out all the episodes of Bitcoin for Millennials. I appreciate your support and hope to see you for another episode. Bye. 